Singh. Please welcome Pooja on stage. Many, many congratulations to you, Pooja. Yes, absolutely. And Pooja, I would love to hear a few words from you. Thank you, guys. This is awesome. I love the vibe in the room. Someone said that already, but this is fantastic. Thank you, Sam and everyone at Impact, all our jury members who sort of made this happen year on year, 10 years. It's quite a bit. Uh, you've got all of us in a room and, and awarded us, which is awesome. I love that. Thank you. Um, I am a result of women empowering women and which is why I'm here, which is why I've been here for the fourth time now. Um, you know, magic happens when women are fearless and when women are empowered. And I have seen that as I've built Glitch. I've seen that as I put together a diverse VML YNR. Um, I hope to see that in the years to come in our industry because we truly are in desperate need of that. We need more and more of this to happen. Uh, thank you so much for giving me a platform. Thank you. Let me also quickly give a special mention here that Pooja also celebrates her birthday today. So wish you a very happy birthday. <laughs> Wonderful to see the entire family joining you here. But we would uh, love for you to stay back as we have arranged a cake for you at the end of the event. So we'd love to celebrate with you. But can we all give her a big round of applause and also wish her a very happy birthday. <laughs> Moving forward to our next name on this list. Now, this name is uh, much later in the list, which is on a higher rank. But as she has to take a flight very soon, which is why we're going to announce the name now. Can we have the name on the audiovisual, please? At number six, Vinita Singh, Sugar Cosmetics. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Ms. Vinita Singh, co-founder and CEO, Sugar Cosmetics. Ladies and gentlemen, for Vinita Singh, many congratulations to you. We'd love to hear a few words. Uh, uh, thank you so much uh, to the team here and uh, the Impact team. Uh, it's, I humbly accept this on the behalf of the incredible 2,500 women that work at Sugar. And, um, I start with the highlights. Um, and of course, uh, you know, we're a company by women for Indian women. So when I see a room full of stunners, stunning women like you, I uh, want to say, uh, please shop Sugar Cosmetics. <laughs> but I think uh, a hamper has been promised to you next year. So I will keep my word on that. Uh, it truly is humbling because, uh, you know, growing up, I always thought you can only be what you see. And um, I always felt this dearth of having enough women role models, leaders. And uh, so being in a room like this um, and seeing inspiration all around really makes me uh, full of joy and a lot of gratitude. And um, talking about role models, uh, ever since I started Sugar, uh, Sarah Blakely, who's the founder of Spanx, has been a role model for me. And one of the things she often says is that, uh, you know, don't be intimidated by what you don't know. Uh, because that can be your greatest asset and uh, help you look at things differently. And I do feel that 10 years ago, uh, I didn't know anything about makeup and I didn't know anything about social media. Uh, but uh, just asking a lot of whys and why nots over the last seven years, uh, we've managed to create a brand that's now in the top three brands in color cosmetics in India. 
and uh, just by educating other women like me who knew nothing about makeup, we've managed to build a community of uh, 2.4 million women on Instagram and another 700,000 on YouTube. So definitely by far the largest and the fastest growing communities um, on Instagram in terms of a beauty brand or any kind of brand in India for that matter. Uh, so I'd just like to uh, end by saying um, thank you and congratulations to each one of you. Uh, you go back today carrying an award uh, which will inspire a few other women uh, to aim a little higher, to dream a little bigger. And I do think it's high time for Indian women to get our ambitions out of the closet and really go after our dreams. So thank you once again. Thank you and many, many congratulations to you, Vinita. Ladies and gentlemen, a little jumble in our list here as our uh, number one ranker has to leave for an important uh, engagement. So here, I'm going to tell you who the topper of Impact's uh, 50 most influential women list 2022 is. Or should we do a little guess? <laughs> we have often see her, seen her grilling her guests with the most pleasant smile. She has been responsible for breaking a range of news stories that have redefined the Indian economic landscape in recent times. And she has also interviewed some of the biggest names in business and politics, be it the legendary investor Warren Buffet to Bill Gates, Satya Nadella or Richard Branson, Sheryl Sandberg, Indira Nui, and so many more. She's also the anchor and editor of the award-winning show Young Turks, one of India's longest running shows on entrepreneurship, a section that over the last 18 years has successfully built a niche category in business news programming. She is none other than, you know the name, but we're gonna show you on the screen. Impact's 50 Most Influential Women list 2022. At number one, Shireen Bhan, CNBC TV 18, Network 18 Group. Here, I'd like to thank Mr. Uday and Mr. Dwivedi. Thank you. Can I request Mr. Amir Jalil, Chairperson, Milan Lowland Task Group, as well as Vaishali Benerjee, Managing Director, Platinum Guild International India, to join us on stage to give this very prestigious award right now. Please join us. Can we have a big round of applause for them as well? Request you to please be here for a picture. And can we hear a big round of applause for Shireen Bhan? topping this list and we'd love to hear a few words from you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my apologies to everyone here in the room. My apologies to Dr. Batra, uh, to you, Kyati, and to Nita for this order mixing up that's happened. But unfortunately, the news calls, and I, I did uh, I'd let them know that I would have to leave by 8.15. So my sincere apologies to everybody here in the room. It is fabulous to be back here. I've been part of this uh, event, part of this list for several years. And I always make it a point to come back uh, because I enjoy the energy. I enjoy the connection. Uh, I enjoy the fact that there are women celebrating other women's success. There are men celebrating our success as well. And I think that really is a testimony to uh, the 10 years that you put this award together, this list together. So congratulations to the E4M and the IMPACT team as well. Uh, you know, somebody outside was asking me, he said, you know, where do you work? And I said, CNBC. And he said, how long have you been there? And I said, 22 years. And he said, oh, aren't you bored yet? And I said, no, because I was very fortunate and very lucky to actually have been able to marry my purpose with my passion. Uh, I'm a big news junkie. That is what I know. That is what I do. Uh, I'm also very, very lucky to have had a very privileged background. And listening to all of the women who came up here on stage, uh, I think it's important for each one of us to acknowledge that privilege. Uh, we've had supportive 
uh, parents, we've had supportive family structures, we've had supportive colleagues, we've had supportive mentors who've helped us along our journeys. But that is our privilege. That is not the lived reality of a large majority of women in this country. And we must recognize that we are the visible minority, but we are a minority nevertheless. And hence, it is incumbent on each one of us to push the boundaries a little bit more. I'm just going to share a little bit of an anecdote with you. I was with the Dr. Batra in Bangalore, we met at the airport, and uh, I was there at an event, uh, and very different from what we see here today. Today I see a sea of women, and yesterday I was surrounded by a sea of men. Uh, and it was making me uncomfortable because I said, you know, we had 14 male CEOs there. I said we should have had women, but it wasn't for the want of trying. Bangalore, unfortunately, doesn't have that many women CEOs, something that needs to correct. But also because it was uh, on a Monday afternoon, the people that we were trying, we just didn't end up with women CEOs. So that was me with 14 male CEOs on a panel. And while I was feeling uncomfortable about this, a young producer of mine sent me a picture, a screenshot from that program that was on TV. And she said, this is such a powerful image. And then it made me think about the fact that every little bit of representation matters. All of this matters, whether you're standing alone with men on stage or you actually have women CEOs with you on stage, every little bit of representation matters, the diversity of representation matters. Somebody talked about role models and we don't have enough role models in India. Uh, and you know, this takes me back to, I remember a conversation that I had with a woman CEO many, many years ago, uh, which actually forced me to, to put my thinking cap on and launch a series on CNBC TV 18 called What Women Really Want. And this is well before people were talking about inclusion and diversity. It was uh, at least more than a decade ago that we launched that series. And the reason why we did that is because when I spoke with this woman CEO, she said, when we were growing up, we had only two kinds of role models. It was either Mother Teresa or Katrina Kaif, and there was nothing in between. And that was the endeavor, that has been the effort on our part at CNBC TV 18 to really uh, try and broad base the way that people look at women and what women can really do. Uh, from my lived experience, I'm not going to stand here and give you a, a long list of things that uh, to do or not to do. I'm just going to share with you things that I've learned. Uh, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned now that I've spent the last 22 years uh, in my job doing what I do uh, is not to let other people's opinion define you. Don't shrink yourself into boxes. Don't shrink yourself into labels. If you have a voice, don't silence it. And I think that is important for each one of us in this room. Use your voice in whatever possible way that you can. I mean, the wonderful women in Iran are teaching all of us a lesson today that that is the courage that women have. That is the courage that women have to change the way that we live, to change the world and the way that it operates. And that is what we must exercise. The other thing that, and again, this is from my lived reality, you know, People are going to judge you, people are going to scrutinize you, people are going to talk over you, they're going to talk about you. So it doesn't really matter. Go out there and be the best version of yourself. And I hope that each one of you uh, will, will do that for yourselves and will also encourage women and men around you to be the best versions of ourselves. I'm not going to take very, uh, I'm just going to take another 10 seconds because everyone here is talking about the impact that we've had uh, on our workspaces, on the people that we've uh, been lucky to journey together with. And the thing that I'm the proudest of today is that we've been able to build a pipeline of talent. Uh, and this is not because we went out there intentionally looking for women, but we went out there intentionally trying to create a workspace that was an equal opportunity workspace. And today, I'm very, very proud to say that whether it is our banking editor, it's our pharma editor, it's our telecom editor, it's our commodities editor, they are all women, and we are very, very proud of that. We're also very proud of the fact that we have had zero attrition on account of maternity. I refuse to believe that in this day and age, we, given, we give women two choices. You can either have a child or you can have a career. And I refuse to believe, I think that is a shoddy cop-out. It's a poor excuse. And I think organizations and leaders need to do a lot better. So finally, I'm going to end with uh, Maya Angelou because I, I, that is just so powerful. And I think so many of us here this evening spoke about empathy. And so you may not remember what I said here today. You may not remember 
uh, what I spoke about, but you will probably or hopefully remember how we felt this evening, and that, I hope, is what we take back from uh, this time that we've spent here. So thank you very much again, and my apologies to all of you. Thank you very much. You know, please, all, it's your evening, all 50 of you, and the five special mentions, but she's numero on the, on, on the list. It'd be nice if you stand up. It's also good for health. Just, just, you know, I'm sure it's a good thing. You can give her a bigger round of applause. And I, you know, I want to say three quick things, which are personal anecdotes. We do the news broadcast awards, and clearly CNBC is the leader. There's no question I run a business product, but I'll say that. But she still comes to the jury meet, makes a passionate presentation, and I think it's the fastest decision that the jury does. Second, I want to say I had the good pleasure of knowing both her bosses, ex-bosses, the promoter and the group CEO, and they told me she's the most hardworking person they've met in media and keeps her team on toes. And I, you know, I know some team members. And third, last year we did the inaugural edition of the Exchange for Media, English Journalism 40 under 40, and I, you know, I'm not involved in e forum that much, but that I chased her saying we can't do the jury without you, and she entered so many of her colleagues, and when they won, some of them. She didn't participate in that process when they were there. She came, sat through three, four hours, cheered all of them, and made sure they, so she walked the talk, so to say. Uh, so please give her a big round of applause. And uh, the only, only thing is, I don't know, a lot of people say, you know, how does she, she looks pretty much uh, like she started <laughs> in television, right? It's a good thing. So please give her another big round of applause, and may you continue to do what you do well and enjoy. Bigger round of applause to Shireen. Absolutely. A big round of applause for Shireen Bhan being the number one on our Impact Top 50 Most Influential Women 2022. Many congratulations to you and the anchors like us. We look forward to watching you every day. Thank you so much. Here, I'd like to thank Mr. Uday and Mr. Duvedi. Thank you for doing the honors. Would like you to take a seat in the audience as we move back to our list and uh, take a look at who has made it to this coveted list. Let's take a look.